So, <laughs> the second Madonna, the Madonna of Might, the mother of words and force, she is going to narrate her account details, her work she has been doing in the inner world. She comes from the inner mind, that is her station, but hers is a work coming from above, from the divine, directly. She stationed in the world of inner mind. She tells Savitri that she is her own secret soul. Oh Savitri, I am thy secret soul. I have come down from the transcendent, from her soul, from her Jivatma. I have come down into the human world and the moment was by an sleeping eye. I see the passing show of things which are happening in the process of time, the roaring of events and constant activity which is going on in this creation. This is what I have been watching always with an open eye and I that never sleeps, that never blinks also. And the moment was by an unsleeping eye. All the great events of history wars, to try the peace, great creations of ours, great creations of literature, drama, music, poetry, quarrels, struggles, anguish, sufferings, all these things she has been watching from above. And the moment watched by an unsleeping eye and the dark contrariety of earth's fate, the contradictions, the oppositions, the struggle which is there that I have been watching constantly, and the battle of the bright and somber powers. There are gods of light, there are powers of darkness, there are the sons of Aditi working here, there are sons of Diti also operating here. The struggle which constantly goes between them, between the gods and the asuras that I have been watching here. It is not only what happens on the surface human field, but the occult battles which constantly are fought. I have been watching them. And I have been playing my part in those battles. And the battle of the bright and somber powers. Chaya Maya Purusha, Prakasha Maya Purusha, the conflicts, that is what I have been watching. I stand upon earth's path of danger and grief and help the unfortunate and save the doomed. That is my role. I see people suffering, struggling. There is a danger on the way. There are pits, there are falls, there are predators, every kind of there are, there are robbers. I guard the pilgrim souls. I stand upon earth's path of danger and grief and help the unfortunate and save the doomed. That is what I have been doing. I give them not only succor but also give them protection. To the strong, I bring the get on of their strength those who are full of valor, 
heroism, nobility your spirit, to them I give the reward of their strength. I give them trophies, I give them award. To the weak I bring the armor of my force. Those who are feeble, to them I give them protection. I put on their breast a defensive coverings so that they can stand against the hostile attacks. She look at tell you what I do. I provide to them all the same. To the strong I bring the get on or the strength. To the weak I bring the armor of my foes. To men who long I carry their coveted joy. They are desirous of joy and happiness. I carry the joy for them. I am fortune justifying the great and wise who have turned towards noble values of life. To them I give my help always. I am fortune Shri and give them the proper reward. Justifying the great and wise Mahan and Nani, to them I give them the appropriate reward. By the sanction of the plaudits of the crowd, there is the approval of everybody all around plaudits. By the sanction, I can't. But those who are not on the path of righteousness, of values, of life, of nobility, to them what do I do? I trample them with the armed heel of fate. Fate comes in and walks over them. I give them punishment, I give them reward. I am fortune justifying the great and wise by the sanction of the plaudits of the crowd, then trampling them with the armed heel of fate. My ear is lean to the cry of the oppressed, those who suffer, who are facing the cruelties of life. I hear their cry and give them help. I topple down the thrones of tyrant kings, the shasanas, those who are bad rulers, tyrants. I throw them on the, in the path of life. A cry comes from proscribed and hunted life. What is condemned? What is not accepted? What is not proper? To that, from that a cry comes. Appearing to me against a pitiless world. I hear that cry constantly. A voice, the forsaken and desolate, and the lone prisoner in his dungeon cell. Somebody is locked up in the prison, in the pit of the house, in the castle, alone, darkness, tied with a heavy metal ball sitting in the wall. I hear his cry, and to him I give the necessary consolation. A voice of the forsaken and desolate is lying there. And the lone prisoner in his dungeon cell. Men hail my coming. They welcome me. In my coming, the Almighty is a force. When I come, I visit them. I live with them. They see that it is not she who is coming. It is a force from the divine himself who is coming here. Men hail in my coming the Almighty's foes, or praise with thankful tears his Savior's grace. They offer their tears to me with thanks. I smite the Titan who bestrides the world. 
uniting with the world, I smite him off. I remove him, I kill him, I destroy him. And slay the ogre in his blood-stained den. These are the powers of the vital nature, asuric and rakshasic. I kill them, I remove them from the scene. I smite the titan who bestride the world and slay the ogre and his blood-stained den. I am Durga, goddess of the proud and strong. See the iron goddess, the iron spirit of heroism, of nobility, of victory. That is what she possesses. I am Durga, goddess of the proud and strong, and Lakshmi of sweetness, of harmony, of beauty, of charm. I am Lakshmi, queen of the fair and fortunate, and I wear the face of Kali when I kill, then I am fierce and I put on the face of Kali to destroy whatever stands in the way. In the moment the demonic forces started attacking in the Second World War, Paris, it was a dance of Kali which arose there. And she took the entire control in her hands. This happens constantly at every important juncture in the course of history. And slay the ogre in his proud stained hand and I am Durga, goddess of the proud and strong, and Lakshmi, queen of the fair and fortunate, I wear the face of Kali when I kill, I trample the causes of the demon holds the lie at my feet. I kill them and I trample them. I am charged by God to do his mighty work. This is the work I am doing. I am charged, I am given the force, I am given the command, I am given the arrange, I am given the strength to do his work. I am charged by God to do his mighty work. Uncaring, I serve his will who sent me forth. He has sent me here. And I don't care about the consequences. Whether somebody will say something good about me, or something bad about me, Somebody will come in my way, somebody will help me, I don't care about that. I do my work because I have received a command to do this work from above. I am charged by God to do his mighty work. Uncaring, I serve his will who sent me forth. Reckless of peril and earthly consequences. What will happen of this? I don't care. These are all small, trivial, earthly things. Victory, defeat, they are inconsequential to me. I reason not of virtue and of sin, whether it is good, whether it is bad, whether it is hunsa or whether it is ahimsa, I don't care. If it is necessary to kill, I kill and I don't consider it is something which I should follow in the manner of ahimsa. Ahimsa is after all what? is a certain nobility for a certain type of work, but when the divine work has to be done, then nothing should stand in the way. We have to transcend even these moral values of life here. They are all of mental values, ethical values only. I am, I reason not of virtue and of sin. If it is necessary to kill an enemy, I kill him. I don't weigh about those things. I reason not, is it good or bad, if the Kauras had to be destroyed, I destroy them. It must happen. In fact, that is the command which is given to man. I reason not of virtue and of sin, but do the deed he has put into my heart. That is the only thing which counts for me. Whatever he has told me to do here, that is what I do. Irrespective of the consequences, irrespective of the comments people will make, irrespective of what God will say, 
what the titans will say, what the Asuras says. I don't care about it. I fear not for the angry frown of heaven. If something is against the wishes of heaven, I don't care. Because my voice, my command, my adesh is coming straight from above, from Almighty. So even if heaven is going to tell me this or that, I don't care about that. It's not small gods who are going to govern my action. It is the Almighty who will govern my action. I fear not for the angry frown of heaven. I flinch not from the dead assault of hell. I crush the opposition of the gods. Tread down a million goblin obstacles. Whatever comes in the way, I tread down. I destroy them, I remove them, I demolish everything which comes in the way. I guide man to the path of the divine. That is my main concern, to guide man on the divine path. And guard him from the red wool and the snake. Red wool and the snake. Red wool, that is a Vedic metaphor, snake. That is a Christian metaphor. I guard man while he is moving towards the divine from the red bull and the snake. Red bull is a terror. You tear you apart. Bull, his concern is to tear you apart, man. He say vital force, a strong vital force who enjoys tearing things which exist. So if man is there, wouldn't mind tearing, but I am there to guard him from the red bull. Same way, man can be seduced, he can be deceived, even against that snake, I guard man. And guard him from the red bull and the snake. I set in his mortal hand my heavenly sword. I give him my sword here, the confessor's sword, and put on him the breastplate of the gods. Armor I put on him so that the hostile cannot attack him directly. I break the ignorant pride of human mind. I am a great doer. I am a great philosopher. I am a great king. I am a great philanthrope. These are the things which man prides in. But I destroy that pride of man. I break the ignorant pride of human mind and lead the thought to the wideness of the truth. Yes, what is your strength? What is your wisdom? Nothing. I take him to the source of all those things, the truth. I rend man's narrow and successful life and force his sorrowful eyes to gaze at the sun, not small little lamps on the road. I ask him to look at the sun and receive direct inspiration from the sun himself and force his sorrowful eyes to gaze at the sun that he may die to earth and live in his soul. Die to earth that he may give up his littleness, his smallness, his pettiness. It is that he must discard. What for? To live in the greatness of his soul the possibilities of his soul. That is what I am concerned with. I know the goal. I am reading the man. I know how to go, where to go. I know the goal. I know the secret route, how to approach the goal. That also I know. I know the goal. I know the secret route. I have studied the map of the invisible worlds. What is going to happen? What is not going to happen? How to move around? I know everything. I am the battle set, the journey, the star. I am in the front of battle, on the forefront there, taking the full command of the army and lead man. I am the battle set, the journey is the star, but the great obstinate world resists my word. The world is not ready to accept what I give it to it. 
not only it does not accept what I give it to it, it resists, says no, 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 it pushes out what I offer him. But the great obstinate world resists my word and the crookedness and evil in man's heart is stronger than the reason, profounder than the pit. That is the pity. You reason something, you argue something, but there is a crookedness deep in the soul of man, in the heart of man, and it resists all that I offer to him. And the crookedness and evil in man's heart is stronger than reason, profounder than the pit, and the malignancy of hostile powers push craftily back the clock of destiny so they will turn the clock back, push it backward. You start moving into the past. That is what the hostile power will do. I am taking man forward in time, but there is the hostile force which will push it back. And craftily back the clock of destiny and mightier seems than the eternal will. What has been destined, what has to happen, the way in which time should move, what has been thought out, given, that is pushed back. And mightier seems than the eternal will. The cosmic evil is too deep to unroot. You remove one branch, again another comes. You remove one tree, another comes. Constantly so. That is the pity of this cosmic evil. And the cosmic, the cosmic evil is too deep to unroot. It's not only by cutting, chopping of surfaces, the outer branches that you can save the world. The cosmic suffering is too vast to heal. As a result, what happens then? Only a few I can help and who receive help from me. People are not ready to receive my help. A few I guide who pass me towards the light. Those who are ready, I take their hand in my hand and take them to the light. A few I guide who pass me towards the light. A few I save, the mass falls back unsaved. A few I help, the many strive and fail. But I have hardened, but my heart, I have hardened and I do my work. It's all right, you are there, but still I will keep on doing my way. But my heart, I have hardened and I do my work. Slowly the light grows greater in the east. Slowly the world progresses on God's road. It is a slow march. Few are there who take my help and slowly things move on the road of God. Slowly the light grows greater in the east. Slowly the world progresses on God's road. His seal is on my task. Whatever I have been doing, he has put his thumb, his seal on it. It cannot fail. It has to happen. The problems are there, the difficulties are there, but the slow work is also going on. And eventually, things will be achieved in the course of time. He sees on my task. It cannot fail. I shall hear the silver, I shall hear the silver swing of heaven's gates. The gates will open out. Heaven's gates will open out. And I will see God coming out of heaven. He sees on my task. It cannot fail. I shall hear the silver swing of heaven's gates. When God comes out to meet the soul of the world. Yes, my work is going on. Things will happen in the course of time. And I am waiting to hear the silver swing of heaven's gates. 
from which through which god will come out and be here to save meet the soul of the world that is my task this is the command which is given to me and i remain here in the world of inner mind and do my task i try to help man to the extent possible those who are ready accept my help the others will follow in the course of time